When a child is diagnosed with pediatric cancer, perspectives shifts, and what's important in life is your family and your children. I just love being able to take care of these kids and bringing them hope and helping to make them better. Having Dr. Scholler in your corner, the leading researcher and pioneer in terms of childhood cancer and specifically neuroblastoma. You know, if you're gonna have to fight this, you want the leading experts in the world to be helping you. We first learned of Ford's diagnosis. It was August of 2019. We were actually on a family vacation and he started to act a little bit off, sluggish, less energy, not sleeping as well. We ultimately took him to the doctors, the pediatrician, got some x-rays. We continued to kind of press and we actually took him to the emergency room. Some of his labs were off. So they asked us to stay the night and that's kind of when it started to sink in that this was starting to turn into a little bit of a nightmare for us. They confirmed that Ford did have neuroblastoma. Never could have imagined what was our healthy, full of energy, rambunctious two and a half year old facing something like that. It really kind of just hit us out of, out of nowhere. Neuroblastoma is a pediatric cancer that happens in children on average about five years of age and younger. Most people think it's a brain tumor, but it's not. It is a tumor of the nerves, but outside the brain, so along the spinal cord. So it's a very aggressive cancer that requires high-dose chemotherapy, followed by surgery, bone marrow transplants, immunotherapies, radiation therapies, to try and get them into remission. We were into this treatment and into this fighting this journey for some time. We had continued to see Dr. Scholler's name. Then we learned that Dr. Scholler was relocating to Penn State and being from Pennsylvania that lined up with around the same time Ford had unfortunately his third relapse. With neuroblastoma, we have to think outside of the box. DFMO is a drug developed by Dr. Scholler and her team and something made available to Ford through her clinical trials. Shortly thereafter, the FDA approval came. DFMO, it's a generic name, Iwelfin being the brand name, is a drug that targets the cancer stem cells. So those cells that hide in the body after a child is finished with their treatment and then six months, a year later, will cause a relapse. So you can see right in the bottom, the white haze, those are the neuroblastoma cells. So instead of about 30 to 40 percent of children relapsing, now we're seeing only 15 percent. What's most scary for parents and obviously for children that are the patients, what was traditionally with neuroblastoma, a high percentage chance of relapse. The question is, okay, we finished the therapy. It's, you know, removed the cancer. We're all really excited, but we're all kind of like, what's next? And so DFMO is that drug, it's that extra cushion or security blanket. It's working to make sure that the cancer doesn't come back. On receiving FDA approval, my biggest feeling was relief, knowing that after all this work, kids would have access. Here at Penn State, we're seeing incredible growth in our pediatric oncology program. Patients are being referred here from across the world. Every child can have access now. He's about nine months into the two-year plan. We haven't had any relapses. We haven't had any additional growth of any of the cancer. That's the main goal. One of the things that we often hear is that, you know, childhood cancer gets 4% of national funding and our children going through this are worth more than 4%. It's important for us to participate in these research opportunities because that's what's going to lead us to a goal of being able to receive treatments that aren't as harsh or you know might not have long-term effects. My goal is to move away from the very harsh toxic chemotherapies that we've been giving our children literally for 40 to 50 years understand their cancer better and what targeted medications can be given to target the cancer cell itself while leaving the rest of the body alone. We're learning every single day how to do better. Together, we're going to get there. We're always happy to share Ford's story as much as we can because we think that that might be the thing that somehow, some way, gets to another child. It might add a little bit of hope for as long as, as I live, certainly, we will do everything that we can until it's not necessary anymore. One, two, three, four. We love you, Ford. We love you, Ford. We won't be done working until every child is cured.